Trump advisor Peter Navarro, who seems to go on cable TV only to be humiliated, claimed today that racism doesn't exist in California, that he doesn't see color, and that there are, quote, real problems in this country to discuss instead of racism. Yeah, the guy rolled up all the old people, I'm not a racist, racist statements and said them in a neat package on television today. My awakening on uh, the race issue was when I was eight years old in a Woolworth store in West Palm Beach, Florida, when I walked over and I took a drink from the colored water fountain because I wanted to see colored water. None of this race, racial divisions have made any sense to me. And you know, I, I'm a Californian. We, we, don't, we don't see race out there. So, you know, it's like uh, I live my life in, in, in a race blind world and, and I just, it troubles me. It, it troubles me that, that we have so much of this discussion uh, when in fact we've got real real problems in in this country racism doesn't exist in california does he not remember the rodney king beatings a huge moment in history he probably should secondly it just speaks to the conservative mindset oh you know i don't see color racism doesn't exist because i wanted to drink from a colored fountain because i thought it would be a rainbow tee -hee. like just because you had one cutesy alleged experience doesn't mean that all of the experiences of black people and brown people and Asian people in this country and native people in this country are invalidated. It's just so self-centered. Thirdly, if you say you live in a race blind world, just a lesson for old white people, you don't see race, etc. That's not true. <laughs> Two, it is erasure. It erases the experiences of minorities in this country and gives them no voice when they want to talk about their experiences. Oh, I don't see color. It, it's, it's invalidating in a really insidious way. And on top of being erasure, it's self-serving. It's a fairy tale to soothe oneself into thinking that they aren't a racist. So Peter Navarro, you got some work to do. And let's not forget that California which I think I saw in the mentions that he's, he's like, was born in Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> in California, there were two black men that were found within a similar area who were hanging from trees. But racism doesn't exist in California. Everyone in California doesn't see color. Delusional. The Confederacy of Southern California is the Antelope Valley, said Allende Love, a longtime Lancaster re resident and organizer. When the body of Robert Fuller, a 24-year-old black man, was discovered hanging from a tree near Palmdale City Hall earlier this month, it plucked at a trauma that had been etched into the black community for generations. Just over a week before, the body of Malcolm Harsh, a 38-year-old black man, had been found hanging from a tree just 50 miles east. Together, Fuller and Harsh's deaths ignited a firestorm of fear in the region of white supremacist hate group violence and police conspiracy during a time of racial reckoning nationwide. Two mysterious deaths of, a, of black men, a thin investigation from a sheriff's department with a documented history of misconduct, as well as the killing of Fuller's brother, all within a dry desert landscape rife with historic anti-black hate. A 2013 U.S. Just Justice Department investigation documented a series of white supremacist-related crimes that had haunted Antelope Valley in the 1990s and early 2000s. The first African Methodist Episcopal Church in Palmdale was firebombed in 2010. Three white youths allegedly killed a black man in 1997 to earn a white supremacist tattoo. Two black men were stabbed by a white mayoral candidate's son who had been reciting white power slogans, and homes were vandalized with racial slurs and a swastika. In 2015, the U.S. Justice Department settled a lawsuit against Lancaster, Lancaster, Palmdale, and the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department for targeting black people with discriminatory enforcement of the Federal Housing Choice Voucher Program. A review of use of force cases in the Antelope Valley from 2010 to 2011, in which the only charge was obstruction-related resisting arrest, found that 81% involved black or Latino subjects. So those statements are gross. There is a long history of white supremacy in 
pretty much every police department, but specifically in Los Angeles, in Southern California, where when they were expanding out there, they recruited racist cops from the South. It is embedded in our policing system, in its structure. We have to defund and deconstruct the police to make it an equitable, community-based, solutions-oriented force, not an occupying force that responds to everything with brutality and might and chest puffing and violence and racism. We can have a community-based, community-serving police force that's broken down into sections that are applicable to the things that they're responding to. And to deny that there's racism in that way, I mean, I, obviously I shouldn't be shocked it's the Trump administration, but really some people just delude themselves into thinking they're awesome when they're just doing so much harm to the discourse and to the planet.